Brut for me was about, I wanted to make a record about the criminalization of, pro of protest worldwide mm -hmm. because I felt that freedom of assembly was, which also relates to, which is part of freedom of speech, mm -hmm. um, was something that was really sold to me as a child as being kind of the bastion of democracy, you know, the jewel and the crown of democracy. And through my experiences as a college student and living in the States over the years and witnessing across different Western countries the way the state behaved towards uh, mm -hmm. protest um, was uh, kind of culminated into this record, uh, the final part being um, the events in, in, in the States in Ferguson and Baltimore, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's interesting because it's been such a presence with all the Black Lives Matter, all sorts of global protests in the wake of Arab Spring, and often the subsequent crackdowns and increased militar militarization, and yet there haven't been um, so many artist responses. And so I guess when you said you wanted to make a record that's dealing with this, in a way, like, what did that mean? Does that mean, how does that shift how you'd make sort of an quote-unquote ordinary record? Is it thinking about the mood? Is it thinking about samples or choices? I mean, um, so for instance, uh, the track Curfew. Mm -hmm. Curfew is really, if you've never experienced a curfew, you might yeah. not relate to it, you know, because curfew is a really, uh, I've experienced it several times in my life. I experienced it in the States, in DC in 1999, okay. during the IMF World Bank protest, I was a freshman in college. It's just this atmosphere of fear mm -hmm. and of, uh, of needing to obey above all else, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's martial law, you know? Um, which I experienced, there was curfews during the invasion of Kuwait every single day. Um, so I had not experienced a curfew outside of the invasion up until the age of 18, and it yeah. really brought back memories of being under martial law. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to take elements that were basically this kind of police, military, carceral state. I wanted to try to somehow condense this, these feelings that have been built up over the years, and when, you, when the distress that you feel when you see that on the screen or when you're there in person, mm -hmm. um, which is this feeling of dread, of fragility, of, uh, you know, uh, David and Goliath. Yes. Um, especially the, 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 the scale of militarization of police, you know, dressed in these Robocop outfits, you know, yeah. and using um, devices like the LRAD, the long range acoustic device, which I uh, start um, the track with, uh, the record with, uh, and the track End Zone. Mm -hmm. Very intense. Yeah, and then LRAD, it was like a 120 decibel directed sound cannon that can cause deafness. Um, and they've been doing them in New York over the last couple mm -hmm. years. But yeah, to, it's, to me, Brute stands out out of all the albums that are released this year because so much dance music and electronic music, there'll be ideas of sort of cosmopolitanism and remix and this ideas of the club was a liberatory space, the club was where you go to get wild, um, which is great, we, we love that. But I feel you took a very different and more complicated track, which is to say, no, let's, let's focus on the when real public space. Let's focus on conflicts and public space. And so not dystopic, but you're like, this is happening now. It's not fun, but this is an artistic response to it. You know, so you didn't make a fun record. <laughs> I think, is a bold move. I think I made the darkest record I hope to ever make in my entire career. Um, and it was, it was difficult because I, I always find, when I first made this record, I made it from a place of complete despair and hopelessness. I didn't have any solutions or anything. I was just like, this is what I'm seeing, this is how mm -hmm. I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and it was also a personal, a personal history, but a larger history of seeing, uh, like for instance, protests in the 60s, um, you know, that civil rights and just democratic rights are never honored by democracies, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it was a long-term 
disillusionment with democracy, which started in 99 when I first witnessed okay. police yeah. uh, brutality in, uh, in the IMF World Bank protests and kind of culminated with this record. And I also s think that I wasn't mature enough to make this record before because it is very... I don't want to use the word painful, but you know, it is just, it's not fun, like you said. It's really mm -hmm. not fun, it's not fun to talk about, <laughs> etc. <cetera. laughs> you know? It's really hard because I, I constantly struggle with the question of art, you know? I definitely mm -hmm. feel like, um, I just read this Johnny Rotten uh, article the other day and he was saying the, some, I'm paraphrasing, he's saying something along the lines is that when you feel s s being safe in the music industry is mm -hmm. the kiss of death. Mm, so and I 100% I don't make work that you are comfortable making. Mm -hmm. you, there needs to be some challenge, there needs to be some, you need to get out of your comfort zone. And this, is, this record is the most out of my comfort zone I have ever been because it is tackling real horrific shit uh, that is not glamorous, not cute, just, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's hard even just to talk about it because it is so wide ranging and is cross cultural and is et cetera. And I think that I really appreciated reading him saying that, you know, mm -hmm. because I feel like yeah. the minute you go into your safe space and just reiterate what you've been doing again, that's when you, you kind of, you, your art no longer has any power. You, there needs to be a debate. You know, there needs to be, um, I definitely feel like I'm a very polarizing artist, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm fine with it now. Like, Brute is about this, but what sort of work do you want it to do in the world? Is it, a, is it about simple, simply sort of articulating a condition, a mood, a psychic space? Is it trying to re reinstate this sort of this historical moment? Is it trying to be like, this is 2000? There's so many different ways in which a record can be about something. I think that one of the uh, blessings and curses about the year 2016 is that we are really coming to terms with the limitations of democracy, mm. especially with the American election, with Brexit. You are seeing the limit. The, this is one of the reasons why I made this, this record is to, sh to, um, to, to start a discussion about Democracy and how democracy is like, it's an old system now. It's mm -hmm. like dictatorship. What is the difference between mm -hmm. the protests in the Arab Spring and the protests at Standing Rock? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. these both protests are, uh, the protesters are dehumanized, criminalized, locked up, um, physically abused. Get, you know what I'm saying? It's like there is no difference on mm -hmm. the ground. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to bring that into full effect with this record to say that, you know, I've been sold democracy ever since I was a child. So uh, just for, for those of you that don't know, um, the Kuwaiti government uh, has a, a limit on the number of people that can uh, assemble publicly, oh. and the number is 20. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. 20. <laughs> wow. After that, it's illegal. And so I grew wow. up really being fascinated by freedom of assembly and the power to mm -hmm. protest. It was like, wow, this is the most coolest thing that you could do, yeah. is just, just be just able to like go onto the street, disrupt commerce, stop traffic, stop everything, mm -hmm. and, and ha air your legitimate grievances with the government, and to see how it actually functions in um, every single Western mm -hmm. democracy, practically, mm -hmm. just illustrates the limitations mm -hmm. of democracy, and how demo mm -hmm. uh, democracy to me now is a, is a public relations exercise, you know? It's like it's not about <laughs> giving the people yes. power, it's about giving uh, it's about safeguarding the power mm -hmm. and money of, of, of the most powerful people in society, you know? Yeah, and to me this, this loops back to this idea of, I mean, music is, it's the, it's the original oral culture, it's the original internet, you know, this idea of in music, it's all about influence and change and uh, intermodulation. Um, you can't think, you know, who 
folk songs, just enter the world and then travel. Um, it's this vision of a world uh, which is all about constant change, then also listening and awareness of community. Um, and as things, as we sort of get more and more wired and electronic and sped up, all these sounds and scenes just, you know, globalize or have these networked, networked existences in a way which feels very natural to us as touring musicians. And so when you talk about democracy, you're like, this is a PR rela relationship. And so that feels so, so this notion of the musical form as saying, okay, this, the nation state is not, is not viable anymore. Even like the idea of a specific genre is not viable. And, and in music, that's totally accepted. But then when you get to actually how we organize our lives politically, how governments make decisions, it's like, no, this is our territory. That's your territory. It's hyper compartmentalized in a way which is totally at odds with the way culture actually works. Um, and so when you, that's, that's the sort of much greater question, but like what, is docu what does democracy mean in an incredibly networked world where all of the major problems are completely internationalized, operating at all sorts of different levels from climate change to freedom of assembly? There is a kind of like thing in the music industry, especially with electronic music, that it needs mm -hmm. to be abstract. Mm -hmm. It can't have a story or a narrative because that would like ruin it somehow or make it pretentious, what have you. There's a long list of adjectives that you can, <laughs> you can imbue yep. on, on top of it. But um, I really, f I, I, I feel like that's completely alien to me mm -hmm. because uh, I feel that music is a storytelling uh, activity. And um, I come from an oral storytelling culture, you know. And um, I definitely feel there is a resistance to stories in mm -hmm. electronic music, mm -hmm. unless they're your personal story of personal struggle or, you know, specific demographic story. But if you go outside of that and try to tell a larger story, there is really extreme resistance to it. It's so true, it's so true. Almost every uh, feature article on a musician, you know, if they've got a quote unquote interesting background, it's got only about them and a greater, and it's you're sort of creating this hero and the heroic buildings room and the rise, like how did you gain your voice? Um, but it's, it's, um, it feels, it feels very urgent to try and tell these wider stories about things that are affecting everybody. You know, it's like, this is like, this, let's talk about the reduction of public space, like the reduction of public speech. Um, what, does, what does that mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm personally just obsessed with history. I want, I'm so, super obsessed with history and want to try to fit it into everything that I do, yep. no matter what medium it is. Mm -hmm. So it's just my personal interest, but I don't know, I definitely feel that narrative and storytelling is a feminine uh, activity and is an oral tradition and is at odds with Western macho spaces. Yeah. You know? And the classical, or one of the classical examples of that is abstract expressionism, right? So it's like in the 60s, the CIA, the American government was like, Jackson Pollock, great. Let's like literally act of funding with lots and lots of dollars funding international exhibitions of abstract expressionists and also jazz, like free and experimental jazz. They're like, this is non-ideological music, so we'll promote it and it sort of give an, a good, good face to American ideology in the era of the Cold War. Like really specific. There's been books and articles about this recently. Definitely. I, I, I just feel like it's also... It's, it, it has a power because the artist never has to explain themselves, never has, has mm -hmm. to explain the abstractness of the music. They just can say about the process, oh, I woke up this morning and went on the organ and spent five hours <laughs> writing this abstract, whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's like they never have to talk about um, empathy or other people or whatever. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a solo genius activity that is just re removed from meaning and doesn't ha somehow doesn't have a, a, a voice or a larger, um, it's not part of a, of a, of a larger scene or, or a story, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. But it brings home the point that we are in this time where artists, from sort of underground artists to massive mainstream artists, actually do, we're in the era of soft power. So yeah. what musicians, cultural figures, and people have to say, have to tweet, have to Instagram, weirdly enough, kind of does echo up and have these strange repercussions um, in things like national elections, you know, Jay-Z and endorsements, Kanye West, 20, 2020, you know, it's like that's... 
Yeah, so that's a much greater question of like, what is the role of, of the artist? Um, if you've got like mainstream rap stars being like, I'm going to endorse that person. I definitely feel like it's a domino effect, you know? Mm -hmm. The more people that you have talking about it from every scene or, or genre or whatever, mm -hmm. I, th I think scene is better than genre. Yes. Um, but the m also, especially for young people, young people are looking up to musicians and their peers and are affected by, mm -hmm. I, I always think of the 60s and the 90s where there was like really um, kind of heated political debate in the mm -hmm. music scene and mm -hmm. uh, I definitely feel like it's necessary. Look at Beyonce, she is using her power. When she performed at the CMAs just recently, yep. I was looking through twi Twitter and saw some country fans saying, okay, Beyonce can perform, but she better know we back the blue. Oh, wow. As if her performance was somehow threatening, uh, you know, uh, fans of police. It was just so weird, you know, <laughs> like that her presence was so unwelcome at this, uh, at this event. Meanwhile, black people invented country music, you know? <laughs> you know, music has always been kind of like an entertainment industry, and entertainment means distraction, you know? So, I definitely feel, but there is, there is a history of, of musicians that have made very bold political choices in their music, and I think that you can still make party music and ha and and it's not separate, you know? Life is very complex and nuanced. You can still do whatever it is you want to do musically and still talk about, uh, you know, uh, political subjects, have empathy with um, people that are not living in your country, etc. you know? So I think it's, everything is possible. There is no limitations.